Even though there's only a few years separating this FJ62 from the FZJ80, there's quite a few differences. This came with a 3F engine, which is a 4 liter inline 6. It has a 94 millimeter board and 95 millimeter stroke. It has 12 valves in the head, and the head is made of cast iron along with the block, so it is very durable. The cylinders have a compression ratio of 8.1 to 1, and it came with 155 horsepower and 220 foot pounds of torque. Another huge difference is that this is four wheel drive. The 80 series is all wheel drive. The difference being in the components in the transfer case. This has manual locking hubs and it activates the four wheel drive system a little bit differently so it is always in rear wheel drive until you activate that. Probably the biggest and most contentious difference in the suspension is of course that this is leaf sprung versus the 80 series being coil sprung. Most people would argue that being coil sprung for off-road is a huge advantage because of the availability of articulation on the axle. Since we got lucky and found this 62 series for only $500 and were able to get it running, we're kind of ahead financially and we can think about engine swaps now. I'd like to hear from you guys what you think we could swap into this, if we should swap a 1FZ, if we should build one with a turbo. I'm kind of opposed to doing an LS swap just because it's been done so many times. You can do a come and swap into one of these and it definitely has crossed my mind, although I would rather actually take the cab off and put that on an 80 series chassis to take advantage of the suspension system and then have the cool body lines of the 62 series. This was kind of revolutionary for Toyota and the automobile industry in general in the 90s because it was the very first of the fuel injected series. In the earlier model 60 series you would have found the carbureted 2F which was an inline 6 4.2 liter with a 94 millimeter bore and a 101 millimeter stroke. So the old 2F engine had a little bit bit more torque but less top range. It had a compression ratio of 7.8 to 1 and it only came with 135 horsepower and 200 foot-pounds of torque. Now if we fast forward to the 90s, 91 we get the 3FE in the first 80 series Land Cruiser but the disadvantages of the early models in my opinion were that engine itself because the FZJ80 carried the 1FZ which is a great engine and I'm really actually thinking about building that and turbocharging it in the 80 series I have. Another thing that the early model FJ80s didn't get was a full floating rear axle. And I believe most of them got drum brakes, so that could be looked at as a disadvantage. When we fast forward to 1993, we get introduced to the first model of the FZJ80, and it has the 1FZ. Now there's a couple different iterations which we found out the hard way in that the later models have the crankshaft position sensor machined into the lower oil pan, whereas the 93 and 94 did not, and there's some other things with the MAF and the airflow. But let's just talk about the 1FZ as a whole. It's a 4.5 liter inline six with a 100 millimeter bore and 95 millimeter stroke. It has a compression ratio of nine to one, and it came with a dual overhead cam with 24 valves. A lot of people have remarked this engine as the 2JZ of off-roading, as I believe the 2JZ has a 95 or 96 millimeter bore and stroke. Something that I'm seriously considering with the 60 series is doing a ute chop because the body is in such bad condition that I could eliminate a lot of the issues regarding repairing panels by just cutting the thing off and then fabricating a flatbed of some sort. It would also give me access to the frame and I'd be able to sandblast and treat all the rust. Or I could really just go ham on this whole cab, completely restore it, get rid of all the rest, soundproof it, and find a way to swap that onto my 80 series. Now of course this FCJ80 behind me needs no introduction. I just purchased this a couple months ago and this is a triple locked 95 FCJ80 with the 1FZ engine. I replaced the head gasket for around $500 and it runs great, so why would you take a perfectly good engine out of a truck and swap something else into it? Well because it's you too, why not? And I love Land Cruisers, I really enjoy doing these swaps and conversions, and I think you guys too, and it provides some much needed information for people interested in doing the swaps. I pretty much narrowed it down to two candidates, so I really wanna do another 12 valve Cummins swap, which I've done. If you haven't seen any of the videos regarding that, there are links down in the description for the total cost, is it worth it, and then I have a playlist documenting the whole build from the time I got the truck and then pulling it out, rebuilding it, etc. I've narrowed it down to another 12 valve come and swap or building the 1FZ for boost. I'm kind of leaning more towards building the 1FZ for boost just because I've never done it before. Now, that means that I have to get forged internals, I have to do an engine rebuild, most likely an overbore in the cylinders. I have to think about machining the crank, getting new bearings. And then I'd probably want to do a manual transmission. Now, the issue with us in the United States here is we didn't get the H150 or H151. Those are the manual transmissions that came from the factory and they're made by Toyota. They're five speed manuals and they're very stout, very strong, but then I'd have to import one. I have a connect down in Australia, James Trinka. Thank you very much for sending me that clutch pedal. I was able to get a clutch pedal from my last come and swap and they actually just bolt right in. There's a bolt hole for them. 
there's a place on the firewall for the master cylinder push rod to go in. So there is room for a manual swap. Now, is that necessary? The stock A443F, I think, transmission that's in these is very sturdy. So you could use the stock transmission, and I do like the idea of saving that, you know, four or $5,000 by retaining the stock transmission. But now you have to get a computer program called, I think it's called Mega Squirt, or there's some other programs you can use in order to tune the shift points in your transmission because I wouldn't want to keep the transmission shift point stock. I would want to let it rev higher and be able to experience the full power band of the turbo. Now it's going to be costly if I end up doing the 1FZ turbo build. I'm looking at Spool Racing I think or SpoolImports.com. It's an Australian company. They make custom pistons. You can also get CP pistons for the 1FZ. You can get connecting rods. Uh, everything's going to be forged if I do build it for a turbocharged setup. Then you need to look at one step colder spark plugs. You need to look at turbo obviously in manifold and then you'll have to do an exhaust of course. So there's a lot of money that would go into a turbo 1FZ swap but I think it would be really cool and also I haven't done it before. I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments below. I've gotten a lot of feedback over which engine to swap into this Land Cruiser. So when my dad bought the white Land Cruiser that had the issue with the cylinder wall and that piston kind of detonating, we have a spare block. So we can build that one. It would have to be overboard obviously because that cylinder wall is scored. But that's kind of a good thing because I have a spare ECU and we could actually use this engine and put it in that 62 series when we do the ute chop. That could be kind of a cool secondhand engine for the 62 series because I know that this engine is in good shape. It has good compression. It runs well. I just replaced the head gasket. You can even do a CX racing turbo kit and it's around $2,000. There is a lot of, you know, do it yourself that you'd have to do with the intercooler piping and other components, but that's really only $2,000. Now the issue is the stock ECU can only handle boosts up to about 5 PSI and even then I don't think it's a good idea to run boost on an ECU that's not tuned for it. So you look at an engine management system. The leading one that I've seen is Haltech and they have I think a 750, a 1500, and a 2500 which refer to different options that are available within the hardware and software of that standalone unit. Now luckily I'm located kind of in the Pacific Northwest here. I'm in northern Idaho but when I live back in Vancouver, Washington, there is a shop called English Racing and they specialize in tuning Evos and STIs in particular, all wheel drive applications. But there is someone there that would be willing to tune a 1FC and they're very familiar with the Haltech program. So I get all the engine built, put in and get it running on a stock, a base map, and then I could tow it down there and then have them make several maps for me, one for long distance, one for off road, and then one for whatever, two step or just tuning or having fun. Also, like I said, I've thought about taking this body off, selling the body, keeping the locked axles, and putting the 62 body on top of this chassis because these chassis are just incredibly stout, they're incredibly strong, they're they're just beefy. This weighs in at 4,700 pounds, whereas the FJ62 weighs in at 4,300 pounds approximately. That's what's listed on the title at least without any modifications or gear added to it. So it's just a stronger base to start from. And again, Shano, I'd kind of be copying Shano's uh, Dirty 30 build, uh, but I think it's a great idea because you get the body lines of the 62 on the stronger 80 series chassis. Well, after three years of struggling to find a decent, consistent job in the restaurant industry, I have finally found a good job this summer. It's going to pay well, and it's going to allow me to finance all these fun swaps and activities. I haven't decided yet between the Cummins swap or the 1FC turbo build, so again, I'd like to hear from you guys down in the comments what you think we should do. If you found any of this information useful, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, we'll do a quick little zero to 60. The speedometer's not working, but we'll, we'll go ahead and use Gaia for our speed. All right, here we go. about 20 seconds.